Welcome to a 1v1 on Colony Ferma Winter. This game is going to be Paul versus Von Ivan. <laughs> Way too many casts. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't do that many. Yes, I do. I do a lot. <laughs> That's not even true. I do way too many casts. I admit it. I'm guilty of that. Combat engineers are standing by. I feel like half obligated to do it, and I half just really, really enjoy doing it. So, the perfect storm. This game's going to be Paul versus Von Ivan. Engineers ready for assignment. Paul playing as Oberkommando Commander West in the east, and Von Ivan playing as Soviets in the west. <laughs> And this base, these plates are reversed. It's really annoying. I hate that. Like, why? Why would Von Ivan be over here when his base is over here? That doesn't make any sense. All right, whatever. Combat engineers are standing by. <laughs> Bloodknock, what if I told you that my girlfriend actually watches my stream sometimes? <laughs> Not that frequently. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, anyway, I'm like not even paying attention to what's happening. Folks Grenadier is taking control of the strategic point over here. <laughs> Apparently Paul is displeased. Stern Pioneers will get some uh, reinforcement done there in the base. And nothing, nothing really that serious has happened so far. Just folks grenadiers taking control of territory. These combat engineers doing pretty good from inside this house. We're already vet one. More combat engineers. More combat engineers on their way onto the field, and uh, Von Ivan has gone with the six combat engineer opening, which apparently is what people do now. This is this is now how you play Soviets. Paul has already chosen Scavenge Doctrine, pretty solid on this map. And von Ivan uh, has counterattack, shock rifle, and Soviet industry at his disposal. Combat engineers engaging some folks grenadiers here in the south will force retreat and engineers are gonna run around get some territory under control yeah this isn't live this is from a while ago but I mean Red Wings and Captain S. Price both spanned combat engineers like crazy during their series and then it happened again <laughs> against uh, Jeselin combat engineer spam beat Jeselin in game two, and Pio Spam beat Jizzlin in game three. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently it's not bad. We have now installed a field hospital at headquarters. Our flamethrowers are here. Let's roast some fascisti. Given the right circumstances, I suppose. Combat engineers down here in the south, taking control of the fuel. Also taking control of this victory point. Combat engineers in this building. We have it. No serious engagements yet. 
And Flag Half Track is in production here from Paul. Going straight from three Folks Grenadiers into that Flag Half Track. M3 from Von Ivan has completed. Panzerschreck shot against it misses. He will re enter the church to try and take another shot. Doesn't get it off in time. Makes it out of range. Stern Pioneers making their way towards this uh, victory point as well. Will probably get pushed away by the M3 unless it hits a mine. I don't see anything in the area. No mine from Paul this early. Doesn't have the munitions for one either. He will be forced to retreat immediately. No flame crits from that burst. And the pathing around this victory point is a little difficult, so won't be able to chase. Flag Half Track is on the field now, making its way towards the center of the map. Folks Grenadiers are going to take control of the VP and munitions there. Enemy infantry. Supply half track is ready for orders. Squad under fire. And the flag half track is making its way towards the center. It's going to engage here on the victory point, creating a zone where this M3 cannot safely engage. It does catch these folks, Grenadiers, in some deep snow. One flame crit forces the squad to retreat. They should be fine. M3 is going to simply get the strategic point back under control. And a fuel uh, cache is being constructed here in the back. Folks Grenadier is taking control of the central munitions point. This flag half track chance can't land any shots on that building because of these terrain issues. M3 here is going to take control of that victory point. We've got some stuff happening here in the center. Combat engineers in the building were forced to retreat from those folks grenadiers. And these combat engineers look like they're going to get forced out. Pretty light engagements though, nothing too serious happening yet anywhere on the map. Flak half track is threatening to destroy these buildings entirely and Von Ivan won't be able to utilize those any anymore. He's throwing up a second fuel cache now. Sinking a lot of his manpower into fuel this early, especially having built really only... Combat engineers is going to... Uh, Give him quite a bit of fuel to work with quite early. I fully expect him to tech to tier 3. Grab a T-34 or T-70 to try to deal with that flag half track. Try and take on uh, some of Paul's infantry over here. He's gone straight into battle group headquarters for healing right by his mechanized regiment head uh, headquarters. So he's not going to have access to tier 4 anytime soon. And Von Ivan will choose Soviet industry. Okay, so... Uh, he's going to have a lot of fuel, and he's going to have a lot of repair potential. He's already got three command points, so his manpower is now terrible, and his fuel income is huge. He's building himself tier three now. Black Half Track has located uh, one of the fuel caches, unfortunately. But that's going to be a pretty quick, <laughs> pretty quick tier three. We could, I think, see a T-70 hitting the field almost before 10 minutes. Not quite. Not that fast. Supply lines have been cut. Heavy vehicles. conditions are now in effect. Flag half track scares away the M3. Paul's getting most of the map under his control now. He's cut off most Soviet resources. 
Yet 26, 26 fuel still coming in on two strategic points, one with a fuel cache on it. <laughs> That's the power of Soviet industry, apparently. And he's... Gonna get that T-70 out pretty soon. But Paul is doing a good job of slowing it down as much as he can, taking control of both fuel points. Stern Pioneers will be forced to retreat from the north by a flamethrower. They're going to get that point back under control. These two squads making their way forward. Force Jaegers into this building. Flak half track making its way back to the area to assist. And finally, Von Ivan's T 70 will roll onto the field, but Paul is preparing for it adequately. He's got two Panzer Shreks and a Puma, so I think the impact this T 70 will have might end up being a little bit limited. The flak half-track will be the most important thing to defend. There are t currently two squads of Panzerschrecks quite nearby to support if it does get in trouble, and it's pulling back to a pretty safe location now. Blizzard is passing. Normal weather is returning. And flamethrowers making their way across the south are going to try and get some of that territory under control. These combat engineers take control of the central munitions. One Panzer Shrek shot does connect. And there goes Von Ivan's last fuel cache, but he is getting some territory back there. Combat engineers in the center are forced to retreat by the Flak half track, and the Puma is very aggressively pushing up to try and engage that T-70. Going to catch it pretty out of position, but its first shot does miss. Second shot connects, T-70 is not going to be able to take this Puma on, and a Panzer Shrek shot from the road will seal the deal. Puma's taken hardly any damage at all, putting Von Ivan at a pretty serious disadvantage. Still has 26 fuel coming in though, throwing up more fuel caches here in the south, getting this fuel point under control. Mines going down as well. Paul's doing a good job of cutting off resources, but he still has a, w a little bit of work to do to actually secure territory for himself. Puma hits a mine here in the south. That was a pretty big mine hit. That Puma is falling dangerously low, but there's not really anything available for Von Ivan to follow up with. Stern Pioneers are very nearby to support. It looks like that Puma is going to be fine. Stern Pioneers should be able to get that repaired, and there's plenty of screening infantry in the area as well. Flag half track up here in the north is continuing to simply try to apply pressure to this Soviet cutoff with folks running your support. Cut off the north resources again. South resources are relatively well defended. M3 will be destroyed by Panzer Shrek fire there. This fuel cache will probably be next unless these flamethrowers can force a retreat. The enemy has cut off a sector. And there goes that combat engineer squad bringing Von Ivan down to only five squads of combat engineers. He's just way behind right now. I'm honestly amazed that he spent so much manpower on caches when he's gone Soviet industry and is already diverting a ton of his manpower to fuel. Folks Grenadiers are going to take control of this fuel point in the north. T-34 has been fielded, catches the flak half track way out of position, and I think it's dead. I don't really see how this could possibly survive this situation. I guess Paul is not even going to try and save it. I don't understand what he's doing. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> that was an extremely late reaction. Way too late. 
And there goes the flak half track. The Puma will now be left to deal with that T-34 on its own. Could be a squad wipe here. What is Paul doing? Oh no! There goes one of his Panzer Shreks. He has he had three, now he's only got two, and his flak half track and full squad of folks grenadiers just got wiped right off the map by one T-34, which is barely even sustained a scratch. Apparently a bug happened. I don't know what it was, but all right. T-34 takes a hit from the Folks Grenadiers there. T-34 gets a pretty good hit off. Puma, which is going to disengage slightly. Paul's kind of on the back foot now. Needs to be careful, and Von Ivan's tank production is probably going to continue at a pretty rapid rate. His manpower is really the biggest concern. He has lots of repairs available to him, no doubt about that. As long as he can preserve his existing squads to try not to spend too much manpower on bleed, should be able to keep the tanks coming. Paul has decided to go with an Ostwind, which against Soviet industry might be the <laughs> worst idea I've ever heard of, because you're pretty much guaranteed to be fighting T-34 spam. But, uh... I guess we'll see if he can make it work. If he can wipe enough combat engineer squads and put a serious dent in, in uh, Von Ivan's manpower, that would definitely be helpful. Ostwin making its way to the front lines. Another fuel cache going up. I can't believe these manpower expenditures from Von Ivan. I really can't. Keeping his manpower pretty low for whatever reason. T-34 awaiting some repairs here in the base. And wow, look at that. Does it really build that fast? That is insane how fast that builds. Vehicles will build almost instantly. True dat. That was crazy. Our enemy has only 200 points. T-34 goes in hard. Mm, gets two consecutive shots. This could be a dead Puma right here. Panzer Shrek. Oh, oh no! Nice usage of attack ground <laughs> right into the middle of the smoke and there goes the Puma and Paul does take the T-34 out fortunately with his uh, Panzer Shrex there's still one on the field low T-34 is going in Trying to engage these folks grenadiers here. Ooh, really nice hit. I don't think that squad's gonna make it home. Nope. Killed by the flamethrower. Wasn't expecting that T-34 hit to take out four or five models. Rick Henwarfer moves up to screen against the T-34 here. Rick Henwarfers are not necessarily a bad choice against industry at all, since you will be fighting predominantly vehicles, but against this many flamethrowers, you do have to be quite careful with them. Combat engineers making their way up into uh, various territories here. Combat engineers in the north taking control of that fuel. Ostwind almost kills that T-34.
Austin continues to hurt squads of combat engineers back to the base, but again, it's not having that much of an impact. It's only killed two two models apparently. Does it really only have two kills? That's terrible. Man, that Austin is not pulling its weight this game. It's been in so many engagements and it has two kills. Why? T-34 receiving repairs here on Von Ivan's base, and he will have the fuel for another T-34 quite soon, coming in rather rapidly. 39. Only 181 manpower, though. Man, that production speed. Look at that. That's crazy. <laughs> Austrian pulls back away from the T-34, second T-34 on the field will roll down here towards these Folks Grenadiers. Eager Light Infantry freezing, going to make their way towards the fire up here on Von Ivan's cutoff, try and cut off some more of his resources. As far as victory points, Paul's way behind, he really needs to secure victory points as soon as he can. Von Ivan's biggest strength, I think, is his victory point control. He is always working those victory points. Every time I've ever lost to him, it's because I just couldn't maintain control of VPs, even when I was winning engagements left and right. Tier 4 going up in a really aggressive location right here. Seems like a risky play against uh, this many T-34s, but if he can effectively defend it, he's got the Rakenwerfer in the church, Folks Grenadiers here by the battle group headquarters to support. This should definitely help him defend this uh, munitions point, and the Tier 4 structure does very nice damage to T-34-76s as well, especially on their rear armor, so... This could, this could be a very uh, powerful position for Paul. Couple squads moving to repair this T-34 now. And this one's chasing that Austin. It's in a pretty dangerous situation right now. It's going to have to make its way back towards the Tier 4 structure for protection by this Rakenwerfer. So far the T-34 has not landed a single shot. Looks like the Austin might be able to get to safety. I don't know if that T-34 is going to want to chase it that deep. But Folks Grenadiers are not really immediately available to support either. This squad tied up fighting the uh, combat engineers down there, but the Austin's only at half health. Looks like Von Ivan will disengage. Nothing too serious there. Folks Grenadiers will retreat from the flamethrower in the south. Flamethrower will retreat as well, and Folks Grenadiers should be able to continue to get territory under control. This T-34 has been repaired and is making its way south with combat engineer support. Meanwhile, Jaeger Light Infantry have been deployed to snipe those combat engineers. Oh, that was a late retreat. Supply lines have been cut. Ooh, there they go. Brave infantry have made the ultimate sacrifice. The enemy is encroaching on our territory. T-34 moves in for a crush maneuver. Folks Grenadiers will be forced to retreat. That squad will also be forced to retreat. T-34 has been successful in countering harassment of the south. That Kenwerfer will be next. And Von Ivan has lost a couple squads of combat engineers. He's now down to only four. His manpower is looking pretty low. And it's coming in very slowly. He's going to struggle more and more this game the longer it goes on because of that really hampered manpower income. It's going to be critical that he keep his tanks alive. Oh, 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 he wants to crush. He's not going to get that much stuff, though. Gets a couple of models. 
and Paul will retreat. It's a little risky. It looks a little too risky for those folks grenadiers to keep engaging and they'll pull out. That Ostwind is actually going to try and finish off the T-34 with some lucky flak bursts. One penetration so far. Ostwind is just going to not get too aggressive here, I think. And that T-34 will pull back for some, for some repairs. Austin continues to screen a little bit for the Folks Grenadier Blob, making its way back to the front line to engage this T-34. And there it goes. Three shots all will connect. T-34 is destroyed. This one will probably be next. Paul's getting himself another Puma. Doesn't really have the fuel to go for a Panther, I guess, and wants a more immediate solution to Von Ivan's T-34, since I think he knows his opponent has gone industry at this point, and he just wants a, a quicker anti-tank solution. And the Puma performs quite well against T-34s, as long as it's adequately protected by um, Panzer Shreks. Possibly also Raketenwerfers, and if it can get a uh, aimed shot off on a T-34, it's almost guaranteed dead. But getting it up to Vet 1 is a whole other story. Puma going pretty deep into Von Ivan's base, though. Which might be a risky move. Tier 4 structure screens away some flamethrower engineers there in the south. More manpower bleed that Von Ivan can barely, barely afford. He does have uh, fuel for a third T-34 if he chooses to go with that. Puma gets some nice shots off on the T-34 there. Oswin gets some lucky penetrations on the frontal armor as well. Oswins do better against medium tanks than you like might expect. <laughs> They're not that bad. They, they do like a little damage to T-34s for whatever reason. Not like T-34-85s, but T-34-76s can't, can't treat Oswins too lightly. They don't, they do non-zero damage. I guess that's the best way to put it. Puma pulls back for some repairs here. The Oswin is somehow at Vet 2 despite only having six kills. <laughs> It has killed nothing, but it's getting decent damage done to these infantry, I guess. And Paul will secure victory point control here in the north, throwing down a booby trap as well. Gonna get some other stuff under his control. T-34 goes in on the Oswin, but the flak shot. Look at that, that's all from flak weapons. Just the tier 4 structure in the Ostwin, bringing it down to half. Actually, no, it took a Raketenwerfer shot, maybe? Or, no, I don't think so. Pretty sure that was all flak weapons. Oh, and a Puma shot, probably. I don't know, I wasn't paying close enough attention, but still. You'd think, like, anti-air weaponry wouldn't be so good against T-34s, but apparently it is. Combat engineers taking control of this strategic point will make their way up to the victory point next. Von Ivan's not in a good position at all. He does not have anything. Four combat engineers and two T-34s. Horrible income. I think he's going for a KV-2, but he's not going to be able to afford it for a long time. Pretty good flame crits. More flame crits than uh, sniper crits. <laughs> Infiltration grenades getting tossed though. Not gonna notice. Ouch. I still don't know who's gonna win this engagement. Okay. <laughs> they both lose. Meanwhile, in the south, another squad gets wiped by the Ostwind. And by another, I think that might be like the first squad that got wiped by that Ostwind. But it does bring Von Ivan down to only three combat engineers. Fortunately, even with his really crippled income, he's flo he doesn't have the fuel for the KV-2 yet. So he's just going to 
just gonna go with more combat engineers for now, I guess. Try and have a little bit more capping power. Combat engineers are standing by. Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. Engineers ready for assignment. T-34s are repaired, we'll engage these this folks grenadier blob a little bit. Three Panzer Shreks is a pretty significant threat, but he should probably spread them out a little bit. That's kind of asking for trouble. He really needs to spread out. Uh, T-34s are not going to engage for a crush maneuver or anything. Raked and moves to support, and Puma in the back will prevent uh, Von Ivan from making too aggressive a maneuver here. He's really struggling for map control and victory points. Gotta, gotta make something happen. But for now, he just has to stall until that KV-2 arrives. About a minute and a half until it does. Paul wants to make an aggressive, decisive maneuver against those T-34s, but at the same time, he's got to be careful. If he clumps too hard with those Folks Grenadiers, he'll be vulnerable to those T-34s. And he doesn't want to let his Puma get caught out of position either, because it'll only take two volleys from two T-34s to destroy it if it gets caught in a bad spot. Really good set setup of these Rakenwarfers right here will absolutely shut down any attempt by Von Ivan to advance beyond his current position, so... So far, they're just kind of both kind of just sitting here waiting for the blizzard to end. Stern Pioneers are going to get control of the fuel here in the south, and Paul will be in a pretty good map control situation. With the 145 fuel in the bank, he's getting pretty close to a Panther, which he's probably going to need to take on a KV-2. Unless he wants to go straight for King Tiger, which is not going to be here for a while. But it looks like that might be what he's thinking, because he's got fuel transfer going, all three tech structures up. It's going to depend on whether he thinks that is... Uh, is something he can he can afford. He may find himself in need of a faster, heavier, an heavy anti-tank solution in the form of the Panther. A King Tiger would take a while. Not to mention it's not that much better against KV-2. Panther's better mobility can take advantage of its slow speed and slow turret rotation. And a Puma is pretty good against KV-2 as well if it can if it can flank it. Obviously, it's terrible from in front. KV-2 on the field and makes its way to the front lines. His first shot and he's horribly off target. Two T-34s go in hard over here on the right side. Catching some very, very low squads. Not sure if any of this is going to get away. T-34 shot fortunately misses right there. And the Puma has moved up to support with Folks Grenadiers. One squad of Jaegers also providing vision over here. But it should probably retreat. Infiltration grenades in this blob. Didn't really do anything. Puma falls dangerously low to T-34 fire. KV-2 is targeting it. Mm, but it couldn't get the shot off and the Puma will pop smoke to retreat. Rakettenwerfers bring the KV-2 extremely low. One in the church and one on the ground. KV-2 will be forced back for further repairs. T-34s over here on the right side have moved to engage and we could see these Rakettenwerfers both go down. This one gets decrewed, and the other one in the church is too slow to evacuate the building, which gets destroyed. Ooh. There goes another combat engineer squad. Von Ivan only has three left, but he does manage to steal the Rakettenwerfer. KV-2 will be sufficient to deter this blob of infantry, and it will simply disengage for now. And Von Ivan has quite a bit of repairing to do. One of his repair stations is almost dead, but still operational. Should be able to get that KV-2 repaired in a reasonable amount of time with his existing combat engineers. He's floating a little tiny bit of manpower that he could spend on a new squad. But his fuel is getting up there. He might want to start fielding more T-34s. Combat engineers are standing by. Looks like Paul's going to make it to King Tiger. Did not cave into the pressure during that engagement and go for a quick Panther. He's just going to field a KT as soon as he can.
Puma getting some dangerous shots, long shots off on those T-34s. It's long range and vision range and decent firepower, rate of fire in particular. Make it a pretty serious threat, T-34s. It forces them to either disengage or engage. They can't just sit out of range, really. They can't slug it out with the Puma. Oh, wow, that long shot, what the hell? <laughs> That came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting that. KV2 just popped it, popped up and boom. Ooh, is that another full squad? No. No, I'm seeing things. Man, all it's going to take is one nasty KV2 shot on this battlegroup headquarters to just totally turn the game around. That being said, Von Ivan having total control of the north gives him victory point control. Paul is kind of running out of time here. He needs that King Tiger. He'll have the resources for it and for fuel. And once that rolls onto the field, it's probably going to be a whole new game. Demo charge going down in the road. And a fresh T-34 is being fielded to the south to try and get Paul triple capped. If that happens, he's going to run out of time very quickly. Koenig's Tiger is in production. He hasn't built any tanks because he was saving for a King Tiger and he spent a lot of fuel on two, two Pumas, plus this Ostwind was another hundred. So, like I was saying earlier, I, I wasn't sure if he was going to go straight for a Panther have something on the field a little quicker, because he is kind of running low on time here. But he didn't. He went straight for King Tiger. That's partially why he's only got 70 victory points in the bank, and he's going to have to make a huge play with it once it hits the field. He does have plenty of troops. He's got those three Folks Grenadiers, lots of vet on them, lots of Panzer tricks. He's just fighting T-34s. That KV-2 is a pretty serious problem. He's going to want to... He's going to want to prioritize that. T-34-76s are not that big of a threat to King Tigers. They can, they can bounce quite frequently. KV-2 misses its first shot. One squad will retreat immediately when Paul senses that it's being targeted. These two chasing down that T-34 and will immediately retreat. Does not want to get wiped by, those King, by that KV-2. Probably could have staggered their retreats, but... Other than that, no big deal, and Von Ivan loses another squad of combat engineers over here. While Paul finally gets some victory points back under control, he's about to get counter-harassed by a T-34, but the Koenig's Tiger is on the field. And the clock is stopped for now. Von Ivan could, there he goes, secure mode on the T-34 will recapture that victory point. This T-34 makes its way back towards the south with one squad of combat engineers to try to get Paul triple capped again. King Tiger making its way towards the north will be more than enough to push away any threats, honestly. And infantry is moving to support. I really hope Paul does not blob that over this demo charge, oh my god. Oh my god, I feel like I'm watching this part of the game in slow motion. <laughs> Tell me this is not about to happen. T-34 just exploded. Uh, okay, it's... He's not that close to it, I guess. He's just gonna lose those Jaegers. That could have been horrible, but it wasn't. King Tiger going in on the KV-2 right here. Squad of Common Engineers gets wiped by Sturm Pioneers available to support. And T-34s are going to go in. Oh, no! There was a mine right there! I didn't even see it! That King Tiger is dead! T-34 shots penetrating even on the... I mean, on the rear armor of the King Tiger. Okay, that one bounced. T-34 here going in for the crush on the uh, Folks Grenadiers. Forced to get pretty long range against that King Tiger. King Tiger's brought to extremely low health. If this KV-2 shot connects, it's done. Oh, they both go up in flames. T-34 wasn't in time to save the day. KV-2 and King Tiger are both destroyed. 
Von Ivan, however, is reduced to almost no squads remaining, but he's setting up a triple cap in the south while all of this is happening. He has a one-man squad of combat engineers that took control of the south VP. The victory points are ticking against Paul so quick, and if he doesn't move a squad over here right now, that's going to be the game. He's stuck around <laughs> capturing this fuel point for too long. I think he's out of time. I think he's out of time. Even if he captures it, that is it. GG. Man, Von Ivan's victory point control does it again. <laughs> During the course of that huge tank engagement, he sent one man combat engineer and a T-34 down to the south, got the clock ticking against Paul, and that was the game. Good game. Allies win.